Okay, the relief has been milled out, and now I'm going to put some more layout dye on there simply to uh, kind of reverse this. This is almost like a negative now, so that as I take cuts over here, the red here will uh, be pronounced. Now I've installed my 60 degree dovetail cutter, 3 quarter diameter, 3 8 shank. Bought that from Enco. Now I actually could use a bigger one than this for this size dovetail. It should be the next size larger. I do not have the next size larger. Because of using this size and the depth that we're going, there's going to be just a little bit of a flat spot right here. But it's going to have to do because I'll just knock that off with a file and it's going to work just fine. Already we're we are ready for the uh, first cut. Now I'm going to concentrate on this end and get it down to a full dovetail. I don't need to worry about dimensions yet until I do the other end. That's when we'll start measuring. Now make sure you get your dovetail cutter good and tight in the collet because there is a strong tendency for them to want to pull themselves down and uh, spoil your piece. So I've got that good and tight. Now let's take a couple of cuts and watch the uh, red layout die. set the depth. We can take some rather heavy roughing cuts to start with because we're not taking much off but as we get in farther into the dovetail lighter cuts will be necessary. Also I like to take my last pass climb milling because you get a little bit better finish. get some aluma cut fluid in there. I'll take it down to uh, almost to a point off camera. Okay, we are down to the right uh, depth or in the X, uh, X axis that is. Uh, notice that at the top here there's just a little bit of a flat spot and that's what I described a moment ago. So this side is done already. We're going to move the camera and move the machine and start cutting on the other end and after I get into uh, a little ways I'm going to take my first uh, reading using the micrometer and the dowel pins. We're ready to take our first cut on this other end. Be sure and lock the x-axis because we're feeding in the y-axis so that there is no movement. And so on. I have taken several cuts and now we're going to measure. I know I'm not quite there yet, but if you recall, that's what I want 1.253. So we'll put a dowel pins in there. And I am using the digital readout in conjunction with this now as I uh, take my cuts. I normally don't like to use this for this situation, but and I won't when I get down close to dimension, but just for the roughing. We are now at 1.239, so call that 240. We're only about uh, 14 or 15 thousandths away from our final cut, so I will start approaching it a little bit slower, and then I'll get the other uh, gauge. I'm going to use the planar gauge to take my measurements. I've taken several more cuts. I've got the dowel pins in there and I'm using the planer gauge. Got it in there snug. Now we're at 253 and a half. Fluctuating a little bit. I'm going to check it with the micrometer now. But I think I'm there. This, I believe, will be my final pass. I took off several more thousands. I've 
got my X axis lock. Now when I feed back, I'm not increasing uh, the feed at all, but now I'm climb milling and I like that for a final cut. Make sure the machine is off when you measure. Get all the chips out of there. And we can put our dowel pins in. Got to get that cutter out of the way. Are my hands in the way? I like this planer gauge for this operation. And let's see what we got here. Two fifty. I'm going to use the micrometer now. Got a two inch stare at there. I like my stare tools. Did I ever say that? All right. One point two. Let's see. Two five two. I'm going to call it quits and take it out in the garage and see if it goes on. I want just a little bit of slop. I don't want it so tight I have to drive it on because remember we're going to be able to tighten it with our, our tightening screw to lock it in place. I'm out in the garage again at my South Bend to lathe and what a difference uh, from yesterday. It's 60 degrees here in Illinois on February 29th. This is leap day or leap year or something like that. The year 2012 and there must be some kind of mistake because it's 60 degrees here I'm quite comfortable in an unheated garage and I even made a batch of castings in my fair weather foundry today anyway back to the subject at hand now do not take this out of the milling machine until you're sure you are to size because you'll never get it back in there for just a, a minor cut I did have to spend a little time filing right here as we talked about before to get those uh, uh, ridges off because I needed a larger cutter but watch this now I can zoom in a little bit I do have pretty nice fit Matter of fact a very nice fit now the next thing I'm gonna do is right here there is a threaded hole at the end of my screwdriver 1 4th 20 and I had to clean that out there was 50 years worth of chips in there so I ran a tap in there now I have in the hole a transfer punch do you recall me talking about transfer punches in one of my other videos and can you see just the tip of it sticking out and I'm going to push the project up against that and tap it brass drift ball pin hammer and that marks it for a hole that we have to drill basement here we come I misspoke a few minutes ago out in the garage when I was talking about transferring this hole I called them center punches or transfer punches I goofed up again but in fact I used transfer screws that's transfer screws that come in this little case and shown in one of my other videos I will now drill this hole quarter inch which it looks like is going to greatly weaken that but for what this is it'll still be plenty strong but if I had chosen a slightly thicker material or if it was steel it would be uh, stronger but that will be a weak spot then we also need to drill and tap a hole on the end I've already laid that out and remember there's going to be a brass pin in there cut at an angle and then a set screw so we will have a 3 16 hole all the way through and then I'm going to drill it 13 64 partially through and tap it quarter 20 for that set screw I will do that now off camera however I will show you how I'm gonna hold that to drill this hole 
I'm at the Walker Turner drill press and I've got the work set on end in a drill press vise which is laying on its side and I am prepared to drill my pilot hole which is going to be eighth inch all the way through then I will drill it three sixteenths all the way through into the dovetail then I will drill it 13 sixty-fourths I haven't decided on the depth yet and then tap it quarter twenty. I'll use my depth stop when I drill make that second operation. That will all be done off camera. I am now fixing to tap the hole quarter twenty. I'm going in there as far as I can with a taper tap and then I'll go back in with a plug tap and that's uh, I'm using some fluid on that. It's about half inch deep for the threaded portion. Then we're going to take this brass rod and we're going to uh, mill a 60 degree, 60 degree angle on the end of it. And we'll do that over on the bridge port. We're back at the bridge port and I have that 3 16 brass rod in the vise and it's setting on one of those thin wavy parallels and I'm using the same 60 degree cutter here and all I'm doing is running it back and forth and milling an angle on there. Now this could be done by many other methods. It could even be done on the belt sander or it could be done by holding the work at an angle in a device and using a regular end mill. But since this setup was already made I thought this would be the easiest way to use it and another way to use a dovetail cutter. As you can see here's the brass rod with the 60 degree cut on it and it's going to fit into the hole in a manner like that so that the set screw can push against it and lock this onto the dovetail on the south bend lathe. So I'm going to cut this off on the black mark and then this quarter twenty set screw will go in there and push against that. Then we're going to take, and I've drilled the hole right here and I, as I told you it sure did weaken it pretty thin there. I can see it wanting to bend there a little bit but for our purposes and what this is going to do, uh, that's not going to be a problem. And then uh, after I get that uh, done, we've got about five minutes of work here. I've deburred everything and then we're ready to go back out on uh, the South Bend lathe and uh, show you how this is used. Back in the garage, and it's about two and a half or three hours since my last little session here in the garage, and, and the wind is howling in Illinois and the temperature has dropped 20 degrees since I mentioned it last, old man winter is returning tonight. Well, the project is done. I softened up the corners a little bit. There's a little brass insert in there. Got a set screw in the end. Cap screw here. And we're going to put it onto the uh, cross slide here, onto the dovetails, using my Bondus brand Allen wrenches. I'm going to put it in that hole a little, little ways just for demonstration purposes. Now I'm going to take the other Allen wrench and tighten it. You know, it could be any place here. I'm going to tighten it in uh, this position for now, just for the sake of conversation. Now, when a fella embarks on a threading job, he can set this any place he wants it, and it can be set as a stop in the direction coming out, or, watch this cap screw here, as we come in. So we got a double stop. Some people, when they're threading, like to back it way out, but well, you don't want to go too far, and then when you're uh, ready to take your next cut rather than watching your collar and your zero you just bring it in to, till it stops 
feed your compound a few degrees, a few thousandths rather. That's loose right now. And uh, it, it really speeds it up. So it's nothing more than a thread stop. South Bend did make this out of cast iron, but I think they're kind of expensive if you can find one. That concludes this little lesson, gentlemen and ladies. Hope it was uh, enjoyable and useful to you. Tubal Cain signing out and saying so long for now.